And you have said that before I can have knowledge of true things, I have to have proof. That's what you said. Right. So now I demand of you proof of this methodology because you believe it. You can use the words and you can rearrange them in sentences, but we cannot change the fact that the resurrection is a belief. And if people want to follow that belief, they can. But you cannot tell me it is as simple as one plus one equals two. That is a fact. All narratives are constructs given stimuli. You have a stimuli, your brain creates a narrative to make sense of the stimuli, and then you form beliefs based upon the narrative. That is how human psychology works. It's called the categories of mind. Your childish characterization was that why do you believe the interpretation? Why do you feed into the interpretation? Right. The fact is... I will deal with that, but can I just, I, I will answer your theological question, but can I just deal with something that you said first? What, the Cathars? Yeah. I want to correct you because you said something that was wrong. They were in southern France and they got killed off. They were, but they were not Christians. But, yeah, okay. I'm not going to argue with that. I mean, if you don't see them as Christians, then... They were not. Okay, so go on, ask your, um, your theological Mine, question. Um, I was reading the book of Genesis and Genesis 2. Uh, sorry, the book of Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. Okay. And it seems there was something in there that which stood out. Yeah. Adam was not the first person created. Go on. The reason I say this is because in chapter 1, 6 to 29, yeah. it talks about God creating male and female. Yes. He also tells them to replenish the earth and they have dominion over the animals. Amen. Then we go to Genesis chapter 2, and in uh, from verse 7, after, no, verse, I can't remember what verse, but after the seventh day, then we're told that God is creating Adam in the Garden of Eden. Yep. So there were people who were created before okay. Adam and Eve in Eden. Can I, can, let, in me, Eden. let me address your question. Sure. Right? You've got to understand I have a, 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 some training in science. Sure. I have absolutely no problem with the theory of evolution. I don't have any problem with the Big Bang theory. I don't have any problem with scientific learning. When I read Genesis 1 and 2, I don't read a literal story. Okay. I read a poetic story. Okay? Now, Adam, in that paradigm that I'm exploring with you, Adam is an is a archetype of all of us. It's telling a story about all of us, which is that we have turned away from God that we have rejected the offer God has made to us and that we have turned aside from him. And we've done that as a species. We've done that from the first human beings. Well, that's interesting. You're saying you don't see Genesis as being literal. Correct. But within the faith of Christianity, it's not meant to be seen as being literal. No. Nope. Actually, if you, look at, if you look at church fathers like St. Augustine, who is pre-modern, okay. okay? He's pre-modern, he's a fourth century church father. Or if you look at church fathers like Oregon, again, a pre-modern church father. These people, Oregon said that there's four ways of interpreting the scriptures. Four ways? I think it's four, yeah. The allegorical, mm, I'm not even gonna try and remember all the terms. I, I used to know all the terms in their academic sense. But the symbolic, the moral, the historical and the doctrinal. That's the four ways that he said that you could interpret scripture. And the one that he favored himself was the allegorical, the archetype. But that causes a major problem because... It, it does if it goes too far, yeah. Yeah, if you go into the book of Matthew, then you then question the resurrection, is it? No, it does if you go too far. But what it's saying is that there's, what he's saying, what Oregon was saying was that there's a layer of history behind all scripture there's a layer of doctrine behind all scripture. There's a layer of moral teaching behind all scripture. And there's a layer of the symbolic, the metaphorical behind all scripture. And that when you use these four le way lenses of interpretation, you can draw out from the scripture what it's teaching. Now, I believe 
that human beings started from an original family. Right? And that's testified to by science. Biological science has confirmed the underlying historical narrative of Genesis that all human beings originate from a small, small group of humans, probably 12. You got a table of nations as well. Isn't yeah, there? probably 12. Where, where did you get 12 from? That's a specific number. This is a number that's bandied about by the, the biologists that have studied it. But go and look into them. Go and look into it. Honestly, you'll see that it does say that human beings originate from a small, tiny group of human beings. A very small gene pool gave rise to every human being. And now, hold on one second. Now think about this for a moment. Right, think about this. At the time that Genesis was written, human beings were all over the place. The person that wrote Genesis had no reason to assume that every human being all came from the same family of humans. They could have concluded that this group of human beings came from this family, and this group of human beings came from this family, and this group of human beings came from that family. That would have been a perfectly rational conclusion to make, given the observable evidence. But the writer of Genesis doesn't come to that conclusion. The writer of Genesis says every human being, black and white, all come from the same human family. And that is not something that from sheer observation and reason you would have concluded. Because human beings naturally don't sleep with members of their own family. So that fact is not allegorical what you've just said. That, what, that, that bit is a historical fact. That's a historical fact. It's a historical fact. But what it also does is it confirms the narrative of Genesis as being, as being having truth in it. Truth that is against the available evidence and reason of the time that it was written. It's a Bronze Age document. But what, what are you using to help you determine which part is allegorical and which part is, is literal? That's fine. So, if my, my, my maxim is this. If good science contradicts a literal reading of scripture, unless there is strong historical reasons, strong historical reasons to contradict the science, then I will assume that the science is right over a literal reading of scripture. Unless there is strong historical reason to assert that the scripture is talking about an historical event that defies the natural laws of science. Contemporary anthropology has identified multiple human species. Yes. That have all intermingled over the millennia. Yeah. So they've even identified bits of DNA which they can't attribute to a fossil. Some of the De Denisovans were discovered in yeah. Siberia. Yeah. The Neanderthals, Homo habilis before that. Yeah. They've all interbred. So there's been multiple Homo you know, floensis, the little yeah, people yeah, on yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple different species of man have existed over the millennia. They were, well, one second, we need to be clear about our definition of a species. They, 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 no, they no. were different. Neanderthal DNA differs from Homo sapien DNA, DNA. But, but to say that there are different species implies that they couldn't um, interbreed and the evidence suggests that Homo sapien and Neanderthal man did interbreed yeah. so we have to be careful about our terminology because so they're a, not the a separate species. Different breed, yeah, would that be okay? Different species. Uh, an anthropologist would not you know, empirically confirmed. I would, I would dispute whether we could call them properly a different Can species. Can I come in on this? Go. Yeah. Okay. What's been happening for about the last 40, 50 years I wish in you'd archaeology come on time. is there's been an enormous row about this very issue about whether it's Homo neanderthalensis, which means it's another species, mm. or Homo Homo neanderthalensis, which means it's a subspecies. Oh, the latter one says that they can interbreed. The other one says that they didn't. And after enormous row about that, we found out that yes, they. They could and that we all have about two percent. So what, what, what we're saying is, what we're saying is, what we're saying is that they're this part of the same species family. Neanderthal man and Homo sapien man is part of the same species family. So do you think they came from Adam and Eve, or do you think they're yes. like a? Yes. But I think there's, Neanderthal there's man, theories about pre yeah, races. Neander, or yeah, Neanderthal man and Homo the Neanderthal man and Homo sapien man both originated from the same human. From Adam and Eve. 
family. We use Adam and Eve as an archetype to represent that basic genetic group. But that's how I that's how I that's how I interpret it. Adam and Eve is metaphorical to solve. When, 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 when are you when are you going to be a Christian, man? Well, I used to be, and I stopped. I don't know. My family's still trying to get me to come back. I don't know when it will happen. But here's the strangest thing: I still read the Bible, which is why I come to you every now and again and ask you questions. What, 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 would, what would need to be talked about, discussed, for you to make a commitment today to become a Christian? It's, it's easy. I don't want to follow a belief. I want facts. Okay. So let's talk about facts. Do you believe that there was a person called Jesus Christ? From what little I've read so far, yes. Would we agree that that is a fact? That is, yes. Would you agree that Christ was crucified on a cross? Yes, I believe, yes. Okay. Would you agree with me that his followers, after he had died on the cross, came to the firm belief that he had risen from the dead? Yeah, yeah, they, they did believe that, yes. What reasons can we have for them to come to that firm belief? Oh, we can go into a whole bunch of things. Maybe they were trying to create a political movement. Right, let's deal with that one. Let's deal with the idea that they tried to create a political movement. Because, and, and what I would invite you to do is, if I take seriously every one of your suggestions, I want you to take seriously my suggestion in return. Oh, yes, yes, I do Okay, that. so let's deal with the fact they were trying to create a political movement. They might have been, I'm not saying they were. Bro. Stop equivocating. Okay. We're just dealing you, be, with the theory. I'll be very specific then to make this easier. I believe certain people like Saul, becoming Paul, was creating a political movement which was different from the Jesus movement which was led by James. Okay. Right, so that's your position. One of my positions, yeah. What did James believe about Jesus? James believed that uh, Jesus, from what I recall, he believed Jesus was, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The Messiah. Do you believe that James believed that Christ had risen from the dead? Yeah, that's, I don't know, that's what I've been told from what I've read. So if James believed that Christ had risen from the dead, yeah. right? Okay, let's, let, we'll come back to Paul. We'll deal with Paul separately. But let's just deal with James's belief that Christ had risen from the dead, okay? Where did he get his belief from? Well, that's it, it was a belief. It was... Where, no, I'm asking why did he come to that belief? I don't know. Right. Right, I would say, I said to you that I would take seriously every suggestion that you could offer. In return, that you would do the same. Yes. I suggest to you, the reason why James came to the firm belief that Christ had risen from the dead is because he had post-mortem encounters with a man that he knew was Jesus. But that's not fact, that's a belief. I'm asking you why he came to that belief. And I'm saying we'll discuss every suggestion, right? Because the thing is, if he came to that belief because those experiences were real, then that means we're not talking about a belief, we're talking about a historical fact. But it wasn't proven to be a historical fact, that's the problem. Right. They were supposed eyewitness accounts. So, so again, let's just come back to James because you're moving around James. All right. James believes Jesus rose from the dead. Sure. We agree. Yeah, yeah. Well, we agree with you then. Why does he have that belief? I, from what I recall, there were eyewitness accounts. James? James? Yeah. yeah. Not from James. I don't know from James. I know that from what little I remember, there were people who claimed and they told James. So it wasn't just James who was one of the, they were eyewitnesses, plural. It wasn't just uh, one eyewitness who said that Jesus had risen. They were eyewitnesses, plural. So a number of people made that claim, but that claim is not evidence. It's not fact, it's a belief. Why would someone have that belief? Well, who knows? They could do it for a million and one reasons. I, I, I would suggest to you, I would suggest to you, if you cannot offer, the way that you do a historical inquiry sure. is you have a number of evidences, right? that has what they call explanative power, all right? It's got to have explanative power to the available evidence. You have evidence over here, you have evidence over here, you have evidence over here. And then you have to come up with a, this is how they do history. Then you have to come up with a theory that accounts for all the evidence without stretching the evidence, without ignoring the evidence, without going against the evidence. That's how you do history. That's how we know anything about history. It's how we know Julius Caesar walked across, marched across the Rubicon. 
It's how we know Julius Caesar invaded uh, England. It's how we know Aristotle was a philosopher. It's how we know Plato was a philosopher. It's how we know they both lived in Greece. Okay? We look at the evidence, we have an exploratory theory that fits the evidence. This is the evidence. Jesus is accounted with, Jesus is a historical figure that had a following of believers that believed that he was the Messiah. That is nothing special. There were messiahs before Jesus and there were messiahs after Jesus. The messiahs before Jesus died and their followers didn't start going round saying that, Jesus, that their messiah had risen from the dead. There were messiahs after Jesus and their followers after their messiah had died didn't go around saying that the messiah had risen from the dead. But there were other gods that were, did that, Dionysus did that, he, ris, he rose from the dead. That's a mythical story. But, but let, let's, let's just deal with right, the, what we know as historical facts. Okay. okay? So, in terms of, in terms of the, the historical fact, we know that claiming to be the Messiah is something that happened before, during and after Jesus' life. That Jesus' movement is unique in history for claiming that Jesus had risen from the dead. Okay? That statement, that belief, okay? is testified by multiple independent sources, historical sources, which we call Luke, Matthew, Mark and John. Okay? These are independently written of one another. These sources we call Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. When you say sources, you don't refer to them as individuals. When you say sources, I, what do you I mean? I am saying that we have historical documents okay, that we call Matthew, Mark, Luke okay, and John. These are historical not, documents. They're, they're, they're not individuals. They they're come just from the first yeah, century. They come from the first century. Okay. They are written about Christ okay. and his life. They emerge from a community that already had the beliefs. So it, to be clear, to get this right in your mind, the beliefs came before the books, and the books came out of the communities that believed. So now we have to ask the question, what could cause a community to believe something? For instance, you don't just walk down the street and go, you know, Simon, today I'm going to believe X, Y, and Z. Something has to happen, either psychological or emotional or physical, that affects your perception so that you come to belief in X, Y, and Z. Agreed? Yes. Right. So we know that people don't just wake up one morning and just invent beliefs and start believing them. But we know that all beliefs originate from some kind of experience. Beliefs come from other, there are other religious systems that existed before Jesus came along. And within those systems, they had um, messiahs that they worshipped who rose from the dead. One of them I, I mentioned was Dionysus. Actually, actually, from all of the research that I've done about all of these so-called stories that reflect Christ's uh, life, none of them actually match the story of Christ. And actually, their supposed mirroring of Christ's life is actually, it seems to me, a bit of an urban myth. I'd like to see the historical document that you're talking about. I mean, I don't expect you to have it now. No, 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 no. I'm not expecting you to produce it now. No. Go away and research it. Let's sit down and talk about it. No, because I was just mentioning one God who, who did come back from the dead. And then there is a... That's a misconception. Like, Mythos, I would say, is, your, is a dying and rising God because we just have um, memorials of pictures of him um, going through a struggle doesn't mean he died. Um, well, no, but the, 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 if I remember correctly, the story of Mithras is that he, he goes down into the underworld, he doesn't die, and he rescues his lover and brings her back. At no point does he actually die, he just goes into the underworld. I mean, I might be mixing it up. There's a whole bunch of mythologies from that period. But one second, bro. I'm, I'm talking to this guy, and I know you want to jump in, but you're just going to have to wait. And uh, the idea of a Messiah coming, the Messiah coming to help people, as you stated before, you said before Jesus, there were Messiahs. 
and after Jesus they were Messiahs, but the one thing that made Jesus stand out was because he rose back from the dead after crucifixion. Yes. So the um the belief in having a Messiah that does amazing things is already part of culture. I, I, I am gonna ask you again, sure. right? And I want you to deal with my question and not Go skirt around it. What caused those people to believe that he had risen from the dead? What caused them to believe? Yes. It could be a million and one things. I don't I don't so think it was don't, fact. Right. I don't know. You I don't said, have a you don't have a better theory. No, I said that to you about ten minutes ago. Right. So know. now entertain my theory. Yeah. Really, really entertain it. Like I was willing to entertain anything that you had to say. Yeah. I was willing to discuss it. Yeah. Now discuss my theory. No, I've discussed your theory. One second, your theory. one second, one okay. second. My theory is that it really happened. Yeah. They really experienced it. Yeah. And that's why they believe it. Yep, and I can entertain that, but I can only entertain it as a belief, not why, as fact. Why not? Because I need more evidence to prove that it really did happen. So, look to yourself. Do you just wake up one morning and, and believe random things? No. Do you believe things because you have experiences that make you believe something? It's a combination of experiences and what I've been taught. Yeah, it's a combination of categories of mind that are then dealing with stimulation and then you put that stimulation, that experience into a category that allows you to understand it. So an example that I've used often, you're walking down a dark street it's in the middle of the countryside and in the distance you see a light appear out of nowhere, skit across the sky and then disappear just as quickly. Where, what does your mind think? It could be a star, I don't know what it could be, anything. It's something amazing but I don't know what it is. Okay, he's a sceptical man, that's fair enough. No, I'm not sceptical, I'm just bro, saying. Bro, I'm that, saying it could I'm be a star. It as an insult, there's no need to defend yourself. But what, what could it be, what could it mean to you then? That's fine. That, no, no, you're, you're a sceptical man, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is, lots of people, category of mind, they go UFO, right? I'm just using it as an example, oh, right? So they, they see a sky and they're like, a light in the sky, they go UFO, right? Because why? Because they've been conditioned to think bright sky, bright night in the sky, UFO. Okay, right? Someone like you, me, who's a bit maybe more trained about these kinds of things, we might look for an alternative explanation. Okay? Right. Now, in first century Judaism, the culture in which this community existed, that came to the belief that Christ had risen from the dead, they had no social conditioning for the idea that an individual would rise from the dead. Palestinian Jews <laughs> did not have that social conditioning. Palestinian Jews believed, some of them, that everyone would rise from the dead. Palestinian Jews believed, most of them, that their Messiah would come as a triumphant king and conqueror. Palestinian Jews, some of them, didn't believe that anyone would rise from the dead. And once you've had this life, that's it, it's over and you're done. Okay? For you to change the categories of your mind, like if you've got a whole list of categories here and then something happens outside of the boundaries of your categories so that you have to change the categories of your mind to take on a new experience, it has to be something quite intimate, personal and profound. Like for example, we all have a belief that our mother loves us. Most of us, yeah? We grow up with that belief. Right? For you to change. Now, if your mother smacked you or, or didn't do right by you, your category of mind would go, well, she's a human being, she's fallen, everyone's, everyone makes mistakes. I put that off to human fallibility. But imagine you walked in one day and she's, you hear her confessing. You're not her son. She was being paid to look after you and actually she hated you all along. Something like that would change your belief, wouldn't it? Right? But it would take something like that to change your belief, wouldn't it? Amongst other things, yes. Yeah. Right. So I am telling you, first century Jews had no category of mind for the idea that of an individual Messiah rising from the dead, it just was not there in their culture. Right? But then they came to believe. You've got to explain why. 
Well, you've just answered the question. You said they came to believe it. They didn't have the evidence for it. All it was a belief. No, no, you, you don't understand the difference between belief and evidence. No, belief and fact. All, no, you don't understand the difference be belief, between belief and fact. Facts are not separate from evidence. Sorry, facts are not separate from beliefs. I work with facts and beliefs all the time. I studied physics at university. I, I, I assure you, facts and beliefs go together. I mean, uh, an example of a fact, one plus one is two. That's, that's a mathematical one. fact, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no one's going to say that's a belief and debate it. But if you say a man rose from the dead, that's a belief. Let me give you an example of fact and belief, okay? Scientists look at the universe. They see that it is amazingly ordered, okay? Many of those scientists don't believe in God and can't believe in a creator, okay? But they see the evidence of a designed universe. But they can't get it into their head that there's a designer, so what do they do? They come up with string theory. String theory is unevidenced. There is no evidence. The only reason why physicists use string theory is because the mathematics looks good and the, it, it feeds into a, a scientific principle about mirroring and reflection between mathematics and, and science. But it has no predictive power apart from identifying that gravity should exist and there's no way as of yet that we can test it in a lab. And they have to come up with multiple models hypothesizing multiple different dimensions to make it work. Okay. Right? Fact. I look at the universe, I see design. Okay. Belief. I don't believe in God, so I have to have another explanation. Facts and beliefs always come together. But not what we are specifically talking about. We are about. talking about. What we we're are talking, talking about. about. We're talking about the resurrection. Exactly. Yeah. We're talking about a human experience. Yes. People came to believe that Jesus had risen from. What make you believe? Just answer now for sure. yourself. Sure. What could make you believe that a person had risen from the dead? What could I? Uh, what would me, take to convince me. you? If I saw it. Right. And yes, if I was able to, uh, well, this is the 21st century, I could record it, obviously. Right, fine, okay. So what could convince you is if you saw it? What, what could convince me if I saw it? Yes. If I saw a dead man and we checked that he was dead. Yes. He didn't have a pulse. And he rose from the dead. And then he woke up from the dead. Right, he rose from the dead and yes. that would convince you. And then I would, men can rise from the dead. Yes, and then I would uh, take um, what's the word? I mean, it's I would take uh, capture evidence, like I said in the twenty first century. Let's forget the capturing of the okay. evidence. I'm, uh, forget the evidence. I'm just yeah. talking about what could convince you. Convince me is if he's dead because he had loads of injuries, blood, everything's out. He's yep. got no pulse yep. anymore, yep. and he was dead for three days. Yep. Three days, so obviously yep. he yep. decomposing yep. starts. Yep. Yep. And then he rose from the dead. Yes. That would convince you. That if I was there to see it. Right. Now let me ask you this question. Yeah. Do you think that people in the first century were any different? Do you think that they were ignorant about death? That no. they'd not seen death a million times? Do you think that they were stupid just because they lived in the past? That they would believe something incredulous and not have the same attitude that you have? No, they didn't have the same kind of uh, basic medical knowledge. Would they know how to resuscitate someone back from the dead? They didn't have that knowledge then, back, did they? What, what are you hypothesizing? That Christ was resuscitated? No, I'm saying, if someone looked like they were dead, did they know how to take a pulse? Did they know how to resuscitate someone back? They, all these little basic things we take for the granted only way now, that this argument, The it. only way that your argument could go forward is to argue that Christ didn't really die on a cross. No, my argument is that that looking at Christ, Christ rising from the cross is a belief, that's all I'm saying. And what I'm saying to you is you don't understand the difference between that beliefs and facts work together. Beliefs and experiences work together. You already agree with me that what would convince you is if it actually happened. If yeah? I saw it happening. Right. Do you think that do you think that the people back in the first century were stupid that they wouldn't go, hold on a minute, I saw you die? But you told me a couple of minutes ago, it was Luke, Matthew, Mark and John, but they were actual, they were not. Those are the historical exactly, accounts. Exactly. One second. But you didn't listen. I did. You what did that. I say? Did I say the beliefs are based upon the book or the books were based upon the beliefs? Oh, I can't remember that. Can you repeat that? I don't remember that. You didn't listen. I said to you, and I'll say it to you again, and okay. I want you to register this because it's really important. Okay. 
The accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are evidence, they are historical evidence of the beliefs of the first Christians. Okay? That's what they are used for in a historical argument, as evidence of what the first Christians believed. But the first Christians believed it before they wrote about it. Yes, and why did they believe it? Exactly. Why did they believe it? You tell me you believe it. Because it really happened. And how do you know it really happened? Because no one would believe that a man had risen from the dead and then give their life for it unless they had experienced something that could convince them that it had actually occurred. Well, that's just a hypothesis. Rabbit, I parents. said we would discuss the hypothesis. Yeah, this, yeah we're discussing that's, the hypothesis. So you're saying... The hypothesis is not... Fact. Is there a pro? No, you don't understand. Stop using the word fact. It's hypothetical. Right, bro. You don't know what you don't know what a fact is. I'm just saying and how it relates I'm saying to if belief. You want to believe that someone rose from the dead? You can, but it's a belief. You have to tell. If you if there's something wrong with my hypothesis, tell me what's wrong. Hypothesis is not fact, is it? You don't understand. A hypothesis is an explanation of facts. No, it's not fact. Fact. If I give a hypothetical, if I give a, it's not fact. You don't know what a hypothesis Jesus is. Raising, coming back from what the is dead a hypothesis? is not fact. What is a hypothesis? We'll stick to the resurrection. What is a hypothesis? I'm just saying it's a belief. A hypothesis is an explanation of the relevant evidence. When a doctor looks at you and he examines your symptoms, right? Yeah. He examines your symptoms and correlates those symptoms okay. to a, a, an explanatory hypothesis based upon your symptoms. In other words, he looks at the evidence, he has a narrative which is a hypothesis, and then he comes to a conclusion. All right. There is nothing wrong with having a hypothesis to that. explain facts. And for the and resurrection, who it was is, the doctor one second, and who were the people who one second, the one second. Okay. It was a it is a undisputable fact okay. that Jesus Christ was a real person. Yeah, yeah, right. It is an indisputable fact that Jesus Christ had a follower of Jewish Palestinian Jews. It is an indisputable fact that those people believe that their Messiah died on a cross. And it is an indisputable fact. Did you get this? Fact. Did you hear that? Fact. 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 That they believed. They believed that he rose from the yeah, dead. They believed. That is a fact. They believed, yeah. That's a, a, they it's believed a fact. Because it's a right. belief. So why did they come to that belief? I don't know. Maybe they were... Who knows why? But it's a belief. Right. So we have the evidence. That it is a belief. So now, you, you, honestly, you're just using terms you don't understand. It is a belief. You can't tell me it is a fact. You can use the words and you can rearrange them in sentences, but we cannot change the fact that the resurrection is a belief. And if people want to follow that belief, they can. But you cannot tell me it is as simple as one plus one equals two. That is a fact. You're confusing. A you're confusing mathematical. You're confusing different types of knowledge. Mathematical knowledge is not the same as, as historical knowledge, and we're talking about a historical question. You're assuming a 500. Yeah, you, you, you've, you're assuming, uh, you, you're mixing up your categories. Now, well, let no, me... I'm not going to follow a belief, that's all I'm saying. But, that, that's you a, but you're already a believer, you believe something. So you're contradicting yourself now, because you're saying, I don't want to follow a belief. That's a belief, right? What are the facts that you're basing I that on? I told you, what well, belief is believing in something where you don't have proof. Right, but you believe that, right? Believing that you can, that people can believe in something without adequate do you, proof. Do yeah, you, right, believe. one second. Do you believe, do you believe okay. that you can't believe something until someone proves it to you? No. So, you can believe something without proof? Yeah, that's a belief, yes. Right. Do you believe that you will follow a belief without proof? It is possible for human beings to do that. Yeah, no, but I'm I talking don't about me. you. I told you from the start, I don't want to be following things without proof, adequate okay. proof. What is your evidence <coughs> for this epistemology? On the resurrection? No, no, we're talking about the question of epistemology now. Because we, we, you, you're confusing categories of information. I think I need to expose the fact that your what epistemology... Is epistemology? Is, what is epistemology? Epistemology is how we come to knowledge. What is the process by which we come to knowledge about things? Truth. 
Yeah? We could, what is we your could, epistemology? We could spend 24 hours. There's so many things. I mean, there's epistemology for, for, <coughs> do you, for history, epistemology for Do you believe science, that before you believe something, it has to be proven for you? I would like, that's what I want to follow. Yeah. Right. Right. So now answer me this. Okay. Who proved that methodology to you and what evidence did they use to do it? That methodology, that was something I've come across in, in my life. If somebody tells me something, the first thing I do is I try and find more information. Now, a prime example was when you gave the, uh, the uh, example of something in the sky. I didn't jump to conclusions. Yeah, you didn't. No, agreed. I said I would like to know more. It could be this, it could be that. That's how I think in no, my, my brain. My question is more fundamental. <laughs> You have stated an epistemology, you have stated a method by which we can come to knowledge about true things. That's what you've done. And you have said that before I can have knowledge of true things, I have to have proof. That's what you said. Right. So now I demand of you proof of this methodology because you believe it. Oh, proof that it works. No, proof of the methodology. You are believing a methodology that is based, I would suggest to you, without any evidence at all. No, not really. I mean, we can go back, so, to, we can go back to the simple mathematics when you're a kid and they tell you one plus one is two and then they have to start explaining it. You have one object, you have another object, you've got two objects. So it kind of makes sense. Okay, one plus one gives you two. That's the basic, the most basic form of the epistemology I'm talking about. Or, or somebody says uh, the grass is uh, green. And then you go through the scientific epistemology process of looking like chlorophyll as to why it then makes the grass green. And then you believe, okay, yes, when grasses grow, they become green. But you don't just believe it, there's a process that you go through. Do you through. think that I've just believed this? Do you not think I've had my faith examined? No, no. It, when, it, when, it comes, <laughs> when it comes when it comes to one thing, that's the only thing that I'm talking about. And Bro. that's the resurrection. Bro, you, you, you are following an epistemology but you're not being consistent. I'm just saying, I, I, but what I'm I saying is, you have a belief system that you haven't evidenced. That I haven't evidenced? Yes. Give me an example of something in my life that I haven't evidenced. Right. That I believe in. Your belief that before you can have knowledge of truth, you need ev physical evidence. No, you, you do need. No, you don't. That is an unevidenced epistemology, and I want to see your evidence. That's, that's where we... Contradict me with evidence. Well, I just uh, just uh, spoke to you about the simple basics. No, you talked to me about mathematics. That's yeah, not. That, that's evidential. No, it is not the epistemology you described. Mathematics is a logical sequence based. Okay. It's a language. It's a logical sequence a logical of language sequence. Okay. that that you can use to describe the world like any other language. Yes. But the epistemology that you described was an empirical one, and what I want from you is proof of the certainty of your belief in that epistem epistemology. So what, I don't know, if somebody uh, says that that man or that woman is their father, and they then how would, say, you, how would you prove it? Well, that's easy in the 21st century. You just take injection, take blood, test DNA, it's called paternal test, it's used every day in criminal. How would and you then prove you really, that they love you? How would they prove that they love you? Well, that's different from what I was talking about. I was talking about someone being able to physically prove that they came from that man and woman, and you've got a Would you agree with DNA. me that your epistemology is limited to, the, to things in the physical world that we can test? Yes. Right. Yes. So what you're saying is you can't know anything about history. No, what, yeah, true. And I cannot also know everything about spirituality. Right. So you're, what you're saying is because of your epistemology, yeah, you can't no, have knowledge of things outside of the physical world. Uh, yes, but uh, the difference is, I'm still willing to believe that there are ways of trying to prove it. I'm not just going to take it. I, 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 I would suggest to you, I would suggest to you that firstly, you need to understand this question properly because you're approaching it like a scientist would approach a, 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 a phenomena in the world that we can test right now. I don't know if I should see that as, a, as, a, as flattering because I don't think I'm as intelligent as, in, as a scientist. Right, but what I'm saying to you is that you're using the wrong form of knowledge. You need to inquire about this event as a historian, not as a scientist. Historians never have 100% of the evidence. Yeah, I will agree with you there, yeah. They never have. Historians always take what evidence they have and you create a hypothesis that fits the facts. Fact. This is a fact. Are you listening? Fact. There was a real person called Jesus. Fact. 
He had followers who believed he was the Messiah. Fact, he died on a cross. Fact, his followers came to believe that he had risen from the dead. Those are your facts. Now have an hypothesis that accounts for all of those facts. Because we missed one fundamental thing. And from all you said, one fundamental thing. That what they believed in actually happened. Did it actually happen? You, 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 you've just tried to sidestep everything it. you everything said. I agree so with everything you said. With a hypothesis. Said, that one thing. Would you agree with me that yeah. I am the only one offering a hypothesis that accounts for all the facts? Except for one thing, though. Everything else, you, you've done a brilliant job in giving me a hypothesis. Not, except for one thing. Question. For one thing, question. you didn't do the I'll resurrection. But go on. So, I'll ask you again. Sure. I have hypothesized that Christ truly rose from the dead. Yeah. It is that that, that that convinced his followers that he had risen from the dead, and that's why they came to believe in it. That is my hypothesis. It fits all the historical facts. Now, do you agree that that is the best hypothesis? And if not, what other hypothesis can you give? Oh, I, I don't like dealing with hypotheses because they're not, but I'll, 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 I'll entertain you what you're saying. You don't know what hypothesis I do, is, bro. I do, Flipping but I, I don't like hypotheses. If your doctor says you have humonia, that's a hypothesis. But you always get a second opinion. No, you don't. Not you always. Do. Well, most of the time you can. You can, but you don't always. If a dentist tells you you need root canal and you don't believe the dentist, you get a second opinion. Right, but, but bro, bro, a hypothesis, you, you, you're scandalized by the word hypothesis, like it's a bad word. No, I just think we've drifted from what we were originally talking we're about. We're still talking about the resurrection. I have given to you a hypothesis that fits the facts. Yeah. You have given me zero That's what you in want. either a criticism of my hypothesis or zero as an alternative hypothesis. Because, well, the one thing I did point out, which you mentioned, Matthew, uh, Luke and John, you said they're historical accounts. Yes. So uh, when this resurrection took place, yes, there were no actual eyewitnesses. Right, and once again, you haven't listened. I'm, I'm asking. Once uh, listen, register this in your mind. The beliefs came first. Okay. The accounts are simply evidence of the beliefs. Exactly. So now we have to ask, why did they believe? And I've told you before. You have no answer. I've told you from the start. Which is? Don't on. follow no. beliefs. You do follow beliefs. You have one. It's a materialist epistemology that is not evidence. And you believe it simply because you've been socially conditioned to do so. No. And you're unreflective in the sense that you are unaware of the fact that you are believing something unevidenced. Yeah, I just want, ev I just want more I secure just proof, want that's all. evidence. That's all. But that I'm means not saying it didn't happen, I just don't want to follow a belief. You're trying to follow a scientific methodology to a historical question. You need to follow the historical question as a historian. The scientific methodology that you are requiring can only be done in phenomena in the now that we can experiment on. True. Right? Okay. But, but you do understand that even the historical approach is a flawed approach. It is not perfect. I am approach. trying to get you to see that because I know that. you're hiding behind it. I'm not. I'm just saying I want proof that Jesus resurrected. That's all. Right. That's and all. the evidence that Jesus resurrected is this. I'm going to break it down for you the evidence. One. You know as a human being, okay. okay, you know as a human being that the thing that could convince you that a man had risen from the dead, yeah, yeah is that you had to, it actually has to happen. It actually has to be something you experience. Yeah. Right. We know as a fact that in the first century they were not ignorant of death. They knew what death was. And we know that the first Jewish community of followers of Jesus knew that their Messiah had died. And we know as a fact that other Messiahs that had died didn't suddenly spring up movements where their followers went round saying that he had risen from the dead. And we know as a fact that the first Jewish Christians followers of Jesus did exactly that. That is exactly what they did. They went around saying Jesus had risen from the dead and then they wrote books about it because they were convinced that it had happened. They were convinced yeah. that it happened? Yes, they were convinced that they were. What happen. made them convinced? It actually happened. How did they know it happened? Because they saw it. Okay. 
So when you say they saw it, who's they? They, the first apostles, Peter, okay. Matthew. Um, I'd have to go through the whole list. The, so the Thaddeus, saw the resurrection. The sons of thunder, John and John. They saw the resurrection. They saw the risen Jesus. Thomas, Thomas the doubter. Okay. Now, we know what happened to these people. Peter went to Rome and died for the belief. Thomas went to India and died for the belief. Mark went to um, Alexandria and died for the belief. Luke, Paul, they died for this belief. What would convince you to die for something as supernatural as a belief that a man had risen from the dead? You just said it, didn't you? They witnessed it. They witnessed it, exactly. Which is why they would be the back passionate that they would right. risk their lives. So around. my hypothesis that I am suggesting to you that best fits the facts of history as we understand it, my hypothesis is that they really saw something that really convinced them that this had happened. Yeah. Now let us entertain the idea that it didn't. Oh, that it didn't, okay. Right. The first Christians made enemies amongst the synagogues very quickly, right? If you were a Jew opposed to the idea of this new Jewish movement that Jesus has risen from the dead and you knew he'd been crucified in Jerusalem, how would you go about disproving something that's false like that? What would you do? Disproving that the res resurrection has Yeah, disproving the resurrection. What would you do to, to disprove it? Oh, well, you just go about saying that the people who are claiming it are liars and ask them for more evidence that it did happen. Like you'd want to see this person who supposedly are resurrected. You'd want to see that person. You'd say, where is this person who came back to life? And if they say that person's no longer around, then you're like, well, then how could they have resurrected? You said that they came back to life. Show me this person. Like yeah. Lazarus, when Jesus made Lazarus come back, yeah. people wanted to see this Lazarus guy. Let's see this yeah. guy. So, so when Jesus so, came back. So, so what you're saying is they go around and say that they lied. That's exactly what the historical yeah. account says that they did. Yeah, they, did. they went around saying that these Christians were lying. You'd also go get the body. Yes. Yeah? And did they get the body? Did they get the body? No. No. Exactly. Why didn't they get the body? Because apparently the body had uh, transcended. But if it didn't really happen, the body would still be there, right? The body would be amongst people, walking about amongst people. No, if it didn't happen. If it didn't the happen. If it did not happen. Oh, it would still be there. Right, yeah. so the body would be there to collect, right? Yeah, the body would be so there. So why didn't they collect the body and just drag it through the streets of Jerusalem saying you're all liars? Oh, come on, we could go into hypotheses and say that maybe they took yeah, the body and hid the body away. Right, who took it? Who hid it? We could say that the, the main culprits trying to promote a particular belief system would have taken that body, hidden it, and then promoted a propaganda. And nobody right. would have known where the body was. Right. But I don't like hypotheticals, but we could do but, that. But, but, but brother, this is, you, you, you're scandalized. Honestly, you're scandalized by the word hypothesis. Knowledge works through hypothesis. Hypothesis is necessary to knowledge. You can't have knowledge without hypothesis. Sorry, I'm using the wrong English word. What I gave you was a hypothetical. Yes, so let's examine the hypothetical. Someone stole the body and lied about it. Yes. Right. Would they go and die for a lie? Would they go and die for a lie? Yes. If, if the people who were the actual martyrs... No, the very first people... Who saw it. That, that stole the body yeah. and then went around teaching that Jesus had... Okay. Uh, would they die for a lie? Uh, no, they would, uh, They did die for a lie. They did? Because they didn't so think... So now they it were definitely didn't if happen. We, if we so go that's in, a belief. No, no. If we go into hypotheticals, I could say that they didn't think they were going to die, did they? They went around promoting this stuff. They didn't think that people were going to kill them for it, did they? When Paul was stoned and yeah. whipped and beaten mm -hmm. and cast out of cities, and shipwrecked and imprisoned. I think he had a clear understanding they might have died. When they killed James for belief in Jesus Christ, I think the people would have had a clear understanding that yeah, they might die for this. Some of what you're saying is really, but Paul's the, the, Let's say, Paul's the worst example to use because he wasn't an apostle. He wasn't there when the resurrection took place. Peter and James place. both died. I mean, he, he came about. Peter like, and James yeah, both Peter, died. Peter and James did die, yeah. But like I so said- So if they it, lied, yeah. and stole the body, would they die for a lie? Would you die for something you knew you were making up? Oh, human beings die for lies, come on. 
No, let's try again, because again you're not listening. Yes, sir. Would you... Would I? Yes, I've been saying that all along. Would you die for something you knew you was making up? Yeah. You would? I could do anything. If I had to, I would do it. So you would make something up, con people, and then if said someone came up to you and said, look, if you don't stop saying this, we're going to kill you, and you knew you were lying and conning people, you would let them kill you. Because I said it's a hypothetical. Because I'm looking. Oh, I'm no, talking about yeah, you. I'm talking about me. Right. Because it's not just about me anymore. There are people who are associated I'm talking about with me. You. Yeah. There are people who are Go associated on. with me. Go so on. if I die for this life and die this glorious, honourable death, then the people who are left behind, they're not going to be messed around with, are they? It's what? bigger than that. Why do people lie? People have many reasons for lying. No, you wouldn't people, die for a lie. You wouldn't lie. die for a lie. People That's die not for very lies. To say die no, for they lie. die when they're deceived. They don't die oh. for the lies that they deceive. So when you know you're lying, so you're I, not going to so die when, for it. So if I give an example, for if I give an example who, of somebody who was tortured and said, "Admit that you are a witch, and we'll stop torturing you, but you'll still die," and then that person lies and says, "Yes, I'm a witch," and then they get killed, they lie. No, they're thinking they're going to live. Yeah, they? but they, they lie. because they think they're going to live. Exactly. They lied because they hoped they would live. But they still lie. No, people lie for benefit. Oh, so now we're now going into talking about... No, we're just talking about human nature. Okay. Because you're not dealing with human nature. I just did. I gave a historical example where yeah, people well, have lied to die. Witches, no, they're they, to they lied they're because they live. tried to live. They were told that you're being, they're torturing you. The torturing will stop, but you will still die if you just admit that you're a witch. If you don't admit it, we're just going to keep on torturing you. You're still going to die anyway, but you're going to die quickly instead of being tortured. And being tortured. So then you say, okay, I want the pain to end. I'll right. do what you let's, want. Let's I'll use his example. And say I'm a witch. Let's his example. I'm not going to dispute it. Let's deal with it. The person dies to get a quick death because they can't stand the torture. In other words, they're lying for a benefit. The benefit is the torture will stop, okay? Yeah. So you lie for a benefit. Now if someone comes up to you and says, we're going to kill you, but if you stop teaching what you're teaching, we'll let you live. Using your example, the person would stop teaching because the benefit is in living. Like in your example, the benefit is in the quick death and the end of torture. For that particular scenario. Exactly. Yes. So in the scenario where someone has a choice between dying because they won't stop telling something they know is a lie and living by just stop telling something they know is a lie, which are they going to do? I'll give you a historical example. During the Ottoman Empire, there was a, a Jewish revolutionary who had a following of Jews who believed that he was the Messiah. He allowed people to believe that he was the Messiah. Gave him influence in society. He gave him a following. Yeah? I, I can't remember their name. I can find out. What? Sabatai Zive. That sounds familiar. Yeah. So anyway, what happened was, the Ottomans came to him and said, here's your choice. You either tell people you're not the Messiah, or we torture you and we kill you. What did he do? He told people that he was not the Messiah, he became a Muslim, and then he had four wives and lived happily ever after. People lie for a benefit. They don't lie because they want to be tortured and killed. People may lie to end torture if the choice is between death and long torture and death and short torture, but people won't lie because they want to, people won't die for something that they know is a lie if by not lying they can live. I think that's a fair, pretty fair human nature statement, and most people, when they reflect in their heart, would agree with that. Human beings are very complicated. Most they lives are cowards anyway, so they're going to be afraid of death. Most, most people are, and that's also a true point. Most people are terrified of death, they'd do anything to stay alive. Yeah, yeah, especially human beings are complicated. You so, can't just so paint what, human what, beings what, in black and white. There are lots of grey areas. There, there are lots of psychological illness, for instance. Yeah, but the, but this is the point. I'm having to give other hypotheses. Yeah, which I don't want to. But I'm I'm indulging your hypothesis, your hypotheticals. I don't like hypotheticals because it doesn't bring us any closer to the truth. Yeah. The truth, my friend, no, no. is a combination of hypo hypothesis to facts. There's no such thing as just facts in isolation that you don't build a narrative on. 
All narratives are constructs given stimuli. You have a stimuli, your brain creates a narrative to make sense of the stimuli, and then you form beliefs based upon the narrative. That is how human psychology works. It's called the categories of mind. Now, it happens in any field. It happens in history, it happens in science. The one exception is mathematics, because mathematics is not a, a science per se, it's a language of description. Now, coming back to hypothesis, I'm a Christian, so I'm preaching Christianity. That's one preaching. Okay. Anyway, sorry, Bob. It was a pleasure. Anyway, sure Bob. talking to you. I love talking to you. I'll talk to you again when yeah. you're free. I know there are more people. Keep, ask, keep searching. I'm just listening. Keep digging. But but go away and reflect on this question. Okay. And I want you to dig into it about first century Jews and whether they were ignorant of death and asking yourself the question of what could convince you and what would need to convince them that something really happened, a phenomena that gives them a belief. I'm not disputing they had a belief. I am not scandalized by beliefs. Everyone has beliefs. I tried to demonstrate that you have beliefs. I have beliefs. This gentleman has beliefs. This lady has beliefs. But, but everyone has beliefs. Everybody. The question is, do those beliefs correspond to reality? Yes. That's the, rea the, the real question. Yes. And I would say that through some introspection and through some historical research, you can come to a firm conclusion that actually those beliefs that Christ rose from the dead are rooted in a real phenomena that people really experienced. Okay. And if that's true, then you have a basis to believe. Perfect. Now you're conditioned. Well, I'll do you're more completely research conditioned. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. You're anyway, conditioned. Great talking man. to you again. You're great. conditioned. So you, you are. You're conditioned. On what? No, you're conditioned. Thanks, on this, on this, uh, came rise from the dead and all that. It's all conditioned. Who was I conditioned? It's all interpretation. Yes, that's true. See this? What's your point? Interpretation. What's your point? Yes, you're right. What's your point? That's all it is. And. Well, do you want to feed into the interpretation, or do you want to think for yourself and cons uh, that is a, con that is a childish, childish no, 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 characterization? No, 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 no. That's a childish characterization. Well, then why are you believing the interpretation? No, you're, you're childish characterization. Tell me why do you believe yeah, the interpretation? I'll explain. I'll explain. No, don't explain. Tell oh, me why. Tell you me why, but don't explain. Tell me why you, you believe. Even, no, 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 you talk about beliefs. You thinking. You talk about beliefs. You thinking about the words you're using. You talk about beliefs. Tell me why you believe that that interpretation works. Right. Firstly, let's deal with your childish characterization. No, no, you no. Have just I said, asked you a simple question. Yes, yes. But I, I am going to answer question. how I would. Yeah, that's if fine. If it's that simple, then that's if fine. it's that simple, but answer. But you know, if someone comes to me with a patronizing characterization, I don't need the history lesson, buddy. I am buddy. going to deal with it. Don't need the history lesson. You don't have to stand here tell and listen. Me, tell me why you, you believe this interpretation. Don't. Sir. Tell me. Sir. Tell me. Are you done? Yeah. So, your childish characterization was that why do you believe the interpretation? Why do you feed into the interpretation? Right. The fact is that as human beings, epistemologically speaking, we are interpreting everything right now. We interpret all things. We also interpret, I'll come to you in a second, madam. We interpret all things. There's nothing wrong with interpretation. It's not that there are bad people doing bad interpretation over here and clever people thinking for themselves over here. What really happens is this. Everyone interprets according to the social conditioning of the categories of mind that you, they have. You, you, what hell does this mean? Including you. Including tell yourself. Me, tell me, you. Including yourself. You're not so answering. you have. You're not answering. You're have, avoiding. No, you're I'm like going, the church. I'm, I'm working, you're like I'm religions. Working up they to, avoid. I'm working up. They to avoid. Because you're just heckling, sir. I'm not heckling. You're just heckling. You've been five speaking so, for five minutes and you haven't told me so how the interpretation now, applies now, to you. Now that we have dealt with your childish it's characterization. Not childish. You're trying to put me down. Now that we've dealt I can't with your believe childish Christ characterization. Trying to put me down. Now let me deal with I mean, the more substance about? to your question. Well, yeah. Let me deal with more your, of the substance in of your, your question. In your let answer. me deal with the substance of your question. Now that we've dealt with the childishness of your characterization. 
So, what, how does this apply to my life? Interpretation of that. Why? How does it apply to my the life? The interpretation. Yes, I got no problem with interpretation. Is. That's all. And it what's is. your point? Well, the empirical value. The empirical of is what, what, is what? Interpretation. And, and your point is that's, what? Uh, that's interpretation. And what is your point? So why do you believe in interpretation? What's your point? I'm asking you. Everyone. Why do you believe in an interpretation? Because you can't do otherwise. Wow. But you can't Everybody do uses interpretation you can't land on the moon. all the time about everything. That's crazy, kid. You are ignorant of the crazy. crazy. Many people can have many interpretations. Are we agreed? Yes. Are we agreed that everyone interprets? Yes. Are we agreed that not all interpretations correspond to reality? No. So every every interpretation corresponds to reality all of the time. No. Agreed. That's, that's what this is all about. Exactly. It's a smoke screen. According this to who? Is a your interpretation. It's a poltergeist. According to your it's interpretation. It's a poltergeist, man. That's you don't know what a poltergeist is. It's oh my gosh. It's a poltergeist. Oh, oh my gosh. A poltergeist. That's all of it. You're no, 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 no. You're you are conditioned. Anyway, you no, are conditioned. Your, your, your no, no, no. You're conditioned. Your conditioned. No, 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 no. You are conditioned. Would you agree, sister? That not every interpretation corresponds to reality. I don't believe in the science. I don't that's an interpretation, science. and that's an interpretation. In You've got an interpretation. So anyway, I have an interpretation. So you believe in Jesus you Christ is going to come back someday. You yes, believe, sir. You do. Yes. yes. Wow. Why is he crucified on a different day every year? Because we connect Easter, the celebration to Easter. Yeah. I'm dying to hear this one. Well, if you shut up a minute, I'll yeah. tell you. Dying yeah, to hear this one, babe. I'll wait until you're done. No, I say I'm waiting to hear this ra rationalization. Well, tell me, why is Jesus Christ crucified every year on a different day, yet he's born every year on the same day? I'm dying to fucking know, man. I am fucking dying to know. Are you done? I am done. Right, you're going to shut up for a minute. I'm going to shut up because I am fucking dying to hear this answer. It's a really easy answer. Yeah. The church fixed right. The, the church takes it up. The answer. church right. takes it up. He doesn't want to listen. He doesn't want to listen. Right. Okay, so you believe in the church. Anyway, so I'm it's going to talk about something joke. else. You're full of shit. Man. Keep going, bro. Keep going. Yeah, I think he's got a few demons. But... I think he might have a few demons. Right, so I'm going to talk about some actual topics that I wanted to talk about now.